this isn't going to be the greatest video in the world because I'm cobbling it together from photos and video clips I have on my mobile phone. But I'm hoping it'll give you a bit of an insight on how I made my own pixel panels. These are run via wireless ArtNet and are being controlled by an Arduino. I'm fortunate enough to own my own laser cutter, so the panels were actually designed out of five mil ply and three mil plywood. The following video clip you're gonna see, which was version one of the design. A lot changed between version one and what was actually made. The biggest difference being is that in version one, my plan was to have them running off 24 volts and then have a step down inside. But after I sat down and worked out the loadings and all the rest of it for the power supply that was needed, I scrapped that idea and went with mains power. Uh, and then obviously built everything inside. So the back panels ended up being bigger in version two than they were in version one. But the principle is very much the same of how everything locked together. The uh, first prototype of the pixel uh, panel. Uh, so this is a 5mm piece of wood. It's been engraved on the front so that you can work out where everything is, uh, where to line all your um, uh, strips up. And obviously each one of these represents where the pixel is. Uh, you've got down the front here, uh, 001. Up there is 12, so you know that you're going that way and then that way and then that way and that way. And it then makes them all identical. There is going to be a thin, um, what do they call it, uh, EVA foam, I think they call it. It's the stuff they make props out of, uh, sandwiched here. And then there's going to be another uh, thinner piece of ply that sits on the front. So the idea is you put the pixels in, you put the foam on it, and the foam will then squish round uh, where all your cabling is, and then you put the front on it. As you'll see from here, there is a part on the back. So that's the back piece that's been put in. There's some little standoffs there. And the idea is, is you take this piece, you mount your electronics on, that then drops in and then that will line up with the holes down there. And obviously it's deliberately uh, slightly smaller so it gives you a bit of play with it. So on the panel you've got screws all the way around and what they're going to be is M4s. Now the M4s are to sort of hold the front panel and the foam in place. And then these ones are M6s. Now the idea of the M6 is you put the M6 in, once you've got your electronics on and the idea is because of this standoff here the cabling can go under there so it comes up and then comes up through either one of those sides. Put your electronics in, uh, which will be in my case a step down and uh, the Arduino. Uh, there will be a couple of holes drilled top and bottom, which I haven't sorted out yet, for the uh, power coming in and out, which I'm going to be running 24 volts. Then you so you put your M6s through, you then put nuts on that there and there, that then holds the electronics in place and it then sandwiches the electronics between everything down to the front. But the, the M6s are designed to be longer. So on the back here, and so this would be the back, that's the inside. So that's designed to glue a M, um, M10 nut in there. So when you turn it over, you pop that on that your M6s will come all the way through to the back. Now what that gives you is that you've now sandwiched from the very back, i.e. the plate that you're actually doing the hanging, right the way through to the front. So everything is now completely sandwiched together. So your M6s come through here, you put your nuts on there, there'll be an M10 glued in there, and that then gives you the ability to hang it. So that's the first sort of prototype done. I've just now got to wait for uh, the pixel strips to turn up and obviously learn how the hell to program the Arduino. So that's what I'm up to. So 
so in this photo you can see this is version two and this is where I'm starting to lay things out and work out having how everything's going to go in you'll see on the right hand side uh, there are three fuse holders and then top and bottom is the cable clamps and the left hand side is the power supply that's now going to be used to step everything down <laughs> So in this picture, you can see the panels have been pretty much made. So these are obviously the version twos. Uh, at the back, you can see a stack of the main panel. Uh, on the front right, that's the foam that I was talking about that gets sandwiched in between the front panel and where the LEDs are mounted. On the left-hand side is the front panel. And not that you can really see them very well. Those black things sitting on top, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, are the things that you just saw being 3D printed. So the next following photos is me starting to assemble them. In this particular picture, you can see uh, sticky tape or double-sided tape on the wood. Uh, I made a mistake when I ordered the strips. I ordered them without the, the backing tape, so I had to put my own down. You'll also note on the end of each strip, there's a, a, a cutout, a hole. And if you look in this picture, you'll see that the tape sort of disappears through that hole round to the back. Now, the reason for this is, is that on the back of the panel is where I jump all the data lines from one to the other, as you can see here. So it goes just literally from one to the other. Then what happens is I put a bit of gaffer tape over it just to hold them down, just to make sure that they would stay in position. And then on that back panel as well, there was another piece of foam and another a small strip of wood uh, which got sandwiched in, which kind of held everything. And obviously the foam is there really to protect the cabling so you're not crushing wood straight onto uh, the cable. Here you can see that I'm starting to power them up. And what I did as I come from the centre, I went positive down one side and positive down the other side. Then I turned the panel round and then did the negative. So in this picture you can see the top half is the positives going down to each corner and the negatives going down to each corner. This meant that the load was uh, quite evenly distributed across all of the strips. These are the 3D printed parts. Uh, what these do, these get mounted inside and they also help when you put the back, the very back on, it crushes everything together uh, so that um, everything sort of gets held in place and they're like a, a standoff really for the main eight mil bolts that go from the very front right the way through to the back so there are two of these uh, you have one that holds the arduino and the arduino is a uh, wemos d1 mini pro the mini pro is the one with the external aerial so that's the mounted there and uh, then obviously you've got the the cabling going in to power them and to get the control signal out so in this picture you can now see everything starting to be mounted together. So on the right hand side, we've got our fuses. So there is a mains fuse, there is a LED fuse, and then there is an Arduino fuse. On the right hand side is our power supply. Bottom half, you can see are all our connections. Uh, top is where the Arduino is. And not that you can see it very well in this picture, but on the right hand side is where the antenna comes out. And then we've got IEC in and out for power. So there is a set of panels completed and you can see that we've got uh, hanging uh, IECs coming in and out. On the back there is uh, the bolt that you clamp everything up to and if you look on the, the, the picture you can obviously see you've got the bolts around the outside which holds uh, the back and the front together and then in the middle bit there you can see you've got the big bolts which go from the very back right the way through to the front which sandwiches everything together so nothing can fall apart there are also some slight changes inside to how the m10 nut was uh held on to obviously just make it a little bit safer so in this picture you can see this was me testing them out on a vertical pole and what i've got is some uh, metal uh, u-channel holding two panels together and then obviously then I've then got them stacked three deep and then they all just obviously you power all the mains up and just collect everything together. 
this is obviously a, another photo, just another couple of photos of them once again on a vertical pole. Uh, just you can see them being clamped onto a vertical pole. Uh, and these poles are just in some tank traps sitting on the floor. And then a picture of them at a disco being used. So there we go. Right, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of little video clips up. Um, I'm going to have to find a bit of music to put over the top of them because obviously there is music playing in the background and I don't want to get into trouble with copyright laws. Um, the Arduino programming, what you want to do is you want to be looking into uh, things like ArtNet and, you, uh, and driving WS2812 LEDs. There is loads and loads of information out there on how to do this. There's loads of libraries on how to do it. And, and to be honest with you, you'll probably find a tutorial out there how to sort of program it all up yourself. So in this video, you'll see the boot up sequence. Now I actually put some code in that when they boot up and they power up, the there's a blue line that kind of goes up the left hand side of the panel. And this is it indicating that it's trying to connect to the router. When it flashes, it tells me it has connected to the router and I know it's connected. The reason you'll notice there it went very, very quickly is because obviously at this particular point, ArtNet was already streaming and it was the panel was catching up with all the ArtNet frames that had been sent to it. 